G'day, I'm Paul. Now let's talk about reliability and utes. You never really hear reliability issues with the Isuzu D-Max. Kind of hear it about a lot of other brands, but the D-Max is rarely ever mentioned. That is because Isuzu makes a lot of trucks. Truck engines are kind of like ute engines in the sense they need to last forever. They run a lot of the time, they're under heavy load. So they've kind of got the formula right here. It is also partly because the D-Max is rarely ever updated, but there is a brand new version of the D-Max coming this year. But we thought we'd jump behind the wheel of this because this currently represents good value for money with driveway pricing. This is $54,800 recommended retail price, competing against cars like the Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, Mitsubishi Triton, Volkswagen Amarok, you name it, there are a lot of competitors in this segment. Today we're going to be doing a detailed review, but I want to set the expectation here. We're not going to be going off-road, we're not going to be load lugging or towing. I understand that's important to a lot of buyers, but a lot of you are going to be just driving this around the city and using it as a day-to-day -day work ute or a family ute on weekends. We will get to off-roading and stuff later on, but today it is all about detail with this. So with that in mind, you can skip ahead to other parts of this review view using the time codes above or if you're on YouTube just scroll down to the description and you'll see the links in there. If you haven't done so already I'd love it if you could hit subscribe and also press the bell icon that's going to tell you every single time we drive something new. Let's talk exterior. I don't know if I love the look of this it kind of doesn't really look that tough. You know some of the cars in this segment like the Ford Ranger they kind of have that muscular look to them this is a bit more BT50 if you know what I mean. Um, okay so chrome highlights on the front here this helps it kind of stand out and gives this model the premium look. This blue looks really good as well it's available in seven different colors with all but the base white being $500 extra. You get LED daytime running lights. Let me walk you through some of the off-road specs here 235 millimeters of ground clearance so that is the height of an object you can pass over with the car and then on top of that you have approach and departure angles of 30 and 22.7 degrees respectively. Approach and departure angles are the angle of the face you can approach with the front of this car and the rear of the car. So pretend you had a 30 degree slope here, you'd be able to start climbing that without hitting any of the front end of this car. In terms of competitors, that's actually a pretty good number and most of the utes in this segment are in a similar category. The car is just under 5.3 meters long. So these are pretty big when you consider you've got to have a passenger compartment and then a tray on the back. So if you are buying this for day-to-day -day driving and you want to park it in a garage, just make sure you've got enough room to fit them in. By the way, have a look at this, different textures there in that paint finish. Not very good. These wheels look really good. They've they've really gone for that sort of uh, stylish look on this car. This is the top spec LST model, so it does come with all the bells and whistles, so to speak. 18 inch, and then it's got these all-terrain tyres, so they are focused on road, but you can do a bit of light off-roading if you need to. Let's run down the side here. You've got those chrome mirrors, the side steps there as well. Now, have a look at this. You can get a whole bunch of accessories here for the D-Max, and I quite like this one. It is a top for the tray. You can open and close that. It protects all your items in there, but don't go storing valuables in here because thieves always break into these things. The payload of this is pretty impressive. It's just over a thousand kilos. Isuzu actually adjusted the leaf springs under this car to make it a bit more comfortable but also still retain the payload capacity. Same story around the back here, three and a half ton towing capacity and you can have up to 350 kilograms of downball weight. Normally you want to be at that 10% market so if you have a 2,000 kilo towing capacity you want to be able to put 200 kilos on the tow ball so this is going to be able to tow virtually anything. When it does come to tow from my experience in the past it's good but not amazing so don't go buying this if you're going to stick a three and a half ton caravan on the back of it. Let's talk interior. It's a bit like stepping back in time. Dual cab utes kind of weren't trendy but then became trendy so the newer ones are looking nice inside but these older ones like the D-Max which has been out for a little while now kind of look a little bit bland. It's all hard material. They have tried to jazz it up a little bit with this soft stuff over here but it just feels completely out of place. So it doesn't look that stylish but is it functional? We'll find out in a second but first First, let's see how hard the hard touch plastics are. We have our durometer here. This measures hardness from 0 to 100, where 0 is soft, 100 is hard. I'm going to give this a little bit of a free kick. I'm going to check it up here, which is clearly hard, but I'm also going to double check that as well. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Oh, that has maxed it out almost entirely there. Let's see what it's like on this soft section. Wow, that is super soft. I don't think I've seen a car that soft before. And then what about the center console lid? That's pretty soft as well. So yes, we do know that Isuzu has a new ute coming. Hopefully they're addressing all of that by actually making it look a little prettier. Let's talk infotainment. This is a very basic system. I think out of all the dual cab utes in this segment, this is probably one of the poorest implementations of an infotainment system. It looks good on the surface. It's an eight inch infotainment unit. It's all touchscreen. And then you have shortcut buttons down the bottom here. So you can go home, back. There's a map slot in there for the 
SD card, sort of hiding behind there. And then you have volume controls and then back and forward for the radio. There's also a CD player as well. Media functions. So if I click on this, you've got AM, FM radio, no digital radio, USB connectivity, which is down here. You have a 2.1 amp charging USB port and then a media USB port plus auxiliary and also HDMI. So you can actually watch video on here if you want. You can also stream Bluetooth audio through your phone. The phone quality is really bad. So if you're talking to someone, you can barely hear anything that they're saying. So it is disappointing that that isn't better. A lot of people are gonna be using this as a work truck. So why not have good quality audio? If I go back one, you have the navigation. This is a third party navigation system. I'll go back here, the, the maps are pretty good. Um, they're, they're very quick. Phone, again, very straightforward phone menu. You can dial the number, find a contact. There's no voice recognition or anything advanced. You have to do it all manually, which means taking your eyes off the road if you need to call someone. An option to switch the display off. And finally, just settings for the infotainment system and eco data. So this just tells you what your driving history has been like in terms of fuel economy. It's all very basic stuff and nothing to get too excited about on the infotainment front. Let's talk other features, not really too many to get through. Starts down here with a single zone automatic climate control. This looks like something that was cool in the 90s, you know, like those old school CD players or something. The design is a little bit funny. You activate it uh, just by turning this, you can adjust the temperature and then you have fan speed and then different modes here for whether you want it up on the dashboard or your feet. Head of the driver is a small LCD display with the engine temperature, fuel, and also the diesel particulate filter, how full it is. Interesting note here with this car, the diesel particulate filter is actually fitted right up behind the engine next to the turbocharger. That makes it really efficient because a diesel particulate filter works by increasing exhaust temperatures to burn off diesel particulates. If it's closer to the turbocharger, it means it's getting hotter quicker and you're not gonna run into some of those issues like they have with the Toyota Hilux and more recently the Ford Ranger as well. Now if you're expecting to see other creature comforts here there's kind of nothing else to talk about in fact it's missing the most basic features such as automatic headlights you don't get that even though this is the top spec model you have to put them on manually no automatic wiper no auto dimming mirror this is all stuff that is common on a lot of other competitors in this segment and hopefully with the new generation of D-Max they're going to address all this by actually throwing the feature book at it there's no emergency stop function there's no blind spot monitor it is very basic and primitive inside this cabin okay maybe it's not totally primitive you do get an eight speaker sound system with speakers in the roof that have live surround sound and then a decent reverse view camera with front and rear parking sensors okay moving on to practicality and let's start with storage where are you going to put your phone it kind of fits there but oh it fits there as well that's not too bad water bottles fit in there and then you have door pocket as well but check this out you also have a slot next to your air vent which means you can stick the bottle in there and if it's a drink you want to keep cold pop the air vent on it and it'll stay cool there is a litany of other bins around here so behind this soft cover you have storage with a 12 volt outlet there's more storage down here but that is crammed full of a manual you've got this as well it doesn't really do anything you can't open it you kind of have to put your finger in behind there it's just a really poorly designed system before you ask this doesn't come with the car it's just a gopro holder that someone's stuck on there and then a center console as well fairly decent storage bin in there too and is it comfortable yes it actually is these seats are really comfy i could see myself going for a long drive in this car the steering wheel is a little bit far away because it has no reach adjustment but i guess that's something you eventually get used to second row it's kind of the place you never want to be seated in a dual cab ute but it's not terrible here in the d-max tow room is virtually non-existent but there is decent knee room comfy as well uh, bottle storage you've got storage in the doors but not really for anything else and then two cup holders down here a usb port for charging of devices a center armrest no cup holders in there but it's good to lean on to you have map pockets in the back of both seats there isn't any iso fix here but there is top tether behind now speaking of behind let me show you a little party trick here so Using this little cord here, this pops up. You have a little hidey hole here for the jack, plus any other valuables you've got. But then this drops as well. So 
You're not really gonna store anything behind there, but this is where your top tether is if you do need to get baby seats into the car. And let's talk about cargo capacity. So we've mentioned the payload there is a little over one tonne, but you also have plenty of room there for storing cargo in the tray itself. It's around 1.5 metres deep and 1.1 metres between the wheel arches. So that's big enough to get a lot of goods in there. So we are behind the wheel of the D-Max now. I just want to give you a friendly reminder. I know you were listening at the start, but we're not going to be doing any off-roading or towing with this car. This is just a detailed day-to-day -day review. All of that stuff will come a little bit later on. So under the bonnet of the D-Max is a pretty trusty and reliable three liter four cylinder turbocharged diesel engine. Put that in for durability and that means it can make 130 kilowatts of power, 430 newton meters of torque. And that's about right for this segment. You're gonna get up to around the 500 newton meter mark when you go to stuff like the twin turbocharged Ranger, but that is gonna give you enough torque for things like getting in and out of the city, overtaking, and eventually when you do stick a load on the back. It's all mated to a six speed automatic ASIN transmission. You can get a six speed manual as well, but this auto is really good. It holds gears when it needs to, so if you're towing and going up hills, it won't start shuffling through the gears, which can get a little bit frustrating in some other cars. It's quite smooth as well, so when you are getting about in the morning on the way to work, it's not gonna throw you about too much. Let's talk noise for a second. On the highway, you're getting a little bit of tire noise, but predominantly the noise that's coming into this cabin is the engine. My goodness, it's loud. As you step on it, Holy Moses, you can hear this thing coming from a mile away and that's not a good thing. It is a really noisy engine. But just on the topic of the engine there in terms of throttle response, the 430 newton meters has more than enough punch. Can be a little bit slow if you're stuck in a gear and it won't kick down, but you just stay in the throttle and it just winds along nicely. It is, it is a really good engine. Fuel consumption comes in at 7.9 litres per 100 kilometres, and we're getting around that. These are really efficient because there's not a great deal going on in them. Yes, they do weigh a little bit. They're around the 2,000 kilo mark, but they're such small engines that rarely ever get exercised, so you will find that they don't use much fuel at all. In addition to a 76 litre fuel tank, you've got a three and a half tonne towing capacity, like I mentioned before, but keep in mind that's for a braked trailer, which means you're gonna have to install a brake controller like they've put here, and they've got the perfect slot for it just off to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. That means you're not gonna have some aftermarket looking switch somewhere. It integrates nicely and allows you to modify the, the level of brake sensitivity on the trailer on the fly. Going from two wheel drive to four wheel drive happens using this center dial here. You can do that up to hundred kilometers an hour. Keep in mind though, you don't wanna be using four wheel drive high range or low range on a sealed surface because you're gonna wind up that differential and that's not good for the car. You really wanna be doing that just on gravel or loose surfaces because when you do lock it into four high, you're asking all of the wheels to turn at the same speed and the second you put some lock on the steering, you're changing the turning radius and that upsets the transmission. Let's talk suspension. Often suspension in dual cab utes when they're unladen is pretty terrible. Here in the D-Max, it's really reasonable because they've gone for a comfort leaf spring setup. In addition to the leaf springs on the rear, you also have a damper. So that evens out some of those bumps. Some of the utes in this segment are really jiggly as you hit bumps at speed. This doesn't really have that effect. So they've rounded it out nicely and you're getting a smooth drive, regardless of whether you're driving on a smooth surface or a corrugated gravel road. It's always consistent and then it gets better as you put load in it and put some load on those leaf springs. Springs. The steering is old school. It's a hydraulic steering system. It's pretty heavy at times, so at low speeds as you're parking, you gotta wrangle it around a bit to make it work. Other utes are going towards an electrically assisted steering rack. That allows them to do things like automatic parking and, and other features like that. So it'll be interesting to see whether Isuzu goes down that path with the next generation of the D-Max. There are a couple of utes now that are moving towards disc brakes at the rear. The D-Max still uses drum brakes. Disc brakes are now, I've heard, are really cheap. So the, the old argument of just using drum brakes because they were cheaper, it's kind of gone out the window now. So I would like to see more utes in this segment going down the path of disc brakes instead of drums. You're gonna get better braking performance and also better heat rigidity as well if you're driving down hills and riding the brakes. Speaking of hills, with the gearbox, you can range through the gears. So if you are towing or doing a long distance downhill cruise, you don't have to be pushing the brakes too hard. All works fairly well. You flick this across, up down gears and 
bumps your ankle. How's visibility? Well, it's pretty good. I can see pretty clearly out the front there, big wing mirrors as well. The only thing I'm not loving, especially with this sort of steering and the seating position is just getting comfortable. There's no reach adjustment on the steering and the seat feels like it's sitting quite high. There's no ability to bring it down any lower. So you kind of feel like you're sitting on top of the car as opposed to inside it. Finally, let's chat turning circle, 12.6 meters. It's pretty big because when it comes to all wheel drive, there's extra gear under the front end and that increases your turning circle and means you've got to have a fair bit of room to get this thing around. So the Isuzu D-Max, should you be spending your hard earned bucks on it? I'll tell you what, it is a really good ute, but it is expensive at the recommended retail price. I would not be paying 54 grand for this when you look at the competitors that are available. When the new one comes out, you're gonna be able to get this for cheap. And generally Isuzu does a lot of deals. So if you put that to one side, it doesn't have the features or the gadgets of some of the competitors in this segment. If that's not an issue to you, the rest of the ute actually makes up for it because you've got stacks of payload and it's a good ute to live with day to day. The engine's punchy enough, the gearbox is good, and it has enough civilities inside it to get you through the work week and then also for the family on the weekend. Let me know in the comments below if you bought one of these and if you've had any issues or are we simply getting this whole reliability thing wrong? We never hear about reliability issues but there is a chance there is stuff out there that we don't know about or alternatively if you bought one and you've never had any dramas let us know as well. I'm always keen to get people's feedback on the cars that we're testing. If you found this video useful please hit the like button also don't forget to subscribe and also press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we test something new but until until next time, take it easy.